Hello, Discrete Structures class. I'm going to do some problems on combinations um, that we didn't get to in class today. And maybe in future semesters, you're just seeing this as a video that goes along with your class. But I'm going to take a look at combinations. The first piece we're going to look at is the, the problem where we talk about how many possible combinations of something are there. Now, a combination is different than a permutation in that permutations order matters. So if you're making a lunch and you use wheat bread, cheese, and lettuce, that's the same lunch as if you used lettuce, cheese, and wheat bread. doesn't mean you put the bread between the lettuce and the cheese, but it's a combination. The order doesn't matter. So this is kind of a classic combination problem. You look in the kitchen to see what you can make for lunch. You have two types of bread, three types of cheese, two types of meat, and four sandwich toppings. So the way you find out how many combinations, how many different sandwiches you could make is by multiplying all the possibilities for each. So you would do two times three times two times four, and that would equal six times eight is 48 different sandwiches. And I say, well, why do you do that? Let's um, go to a different piece of paper. So I had two times three times four times two, was it? Yeah, times two. That was, so I had 48 combinations. I had two breads, three meats, two, three cheeses, I don't know, something like that. Let me go back and read the problem, sorry. <laughs> three breads, two meats, two breads, three cheese, two, three, two, four. And it went, okay. Let me go to a bigger page here. So two breads, three meats, two cheeses, and four types of toppings. So this was cheese, this was meat, this was bread, and this was toppings. You can make what they call a possibility tree. Now drawing these all the time is a hassle. And that's why I kind of just gave you the conclusion. But here is where I get these numbers from. So I make a choice for bread. And I choose either bread number one or bread number two. And I'm going to scroll this down. I'm going to need more room. You're going to see why I couldn't finish this in class. And so if I choose bread one, I now have three possibilities for meat. If I choose bread two, I now have three possibilities for meat still. So I choose meat one. This would be meat. Meat two or meat three. Meat one, meat two, or meat three. So now I have white bread with turkey, white bread with ham, white bread with tuna. Wheat bread with turkey, wheat bread with ham, wheat bread with tuna. So I could have a white bread with turkey with American cheese or with provolone cheese. I'll use an A and a P there. I can have a white bread with ham with American cheese or with provolone cheese. There's two choices. There's still two choices here. So no matter which meat I choose, I still get two new choices. American provolone, American or provolone, American or provolone. So I'm drawing branches, and each branch represents a path. This would be wheat bread, turkey, American cheese. Now, once I choose the cheese, I get my four toppings. I'm just going to number them one through four for the sake of speed. But each one of these ends of cheese has four branches coming off of it. So if you went and counted all the paths you ended up with, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You would find out that it's so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve with at the end of cheese with each with four coming off of it. You have you would have 48 ends to this path and in each path. And we'll, we're going to talk about paths and trees and graphs um, in this way in this course represents one sandwich. This could be wheat bread with turkey with American cheese with lettuce. This next one here, wheat bread with turkey with American cheese, will be a different path if I ended it with tomato instead. So that is how I get the idea that I multiply. It tells us the multiplication tells you how many possible paths you have in this possibility tree. So that is how you handle the basic problem of a combination. Let's look at a couple of other um, variations of this one. Now the question is, what if you take one of each category and no meat? Well, meat was the second category. 
So you basically have two times, you have less choices. Two times two times four, you have um, four times four is 16 choices. I think meat was a three, sorry. Yeah, uh, meat was a two, sorry, I crossed out the wrong thing. So you had, so you had three type, three types of cheese. Is that how I did that? Sorry, I'm losing track of the problem. So two times three, and you would skip the two for the meat and go, so you would do two for the bread, three for the cheese, four for the toppings and multiply those. There's no meat, so that's not part of the choice. So there are less branches here, 12 times. So you actually get half as many because you took out two, two paths that were related to the meat. So you took out two sets of paths, not just two paths. Multiply the possibilities together. Now this question, again, I'm going to have to get this straight. We have two breads, three cheeses, two meats, and four toppings. Two breads, three cheeses, four meats, I mean two meats, and four toppings. Two toppings. So I'm not going to just pick one out of four. I'm going to pick some combination of two chosen from four. And we write this in math. Take four things and choose two is written like that in a set of parentheses. Or you may have seen this. Four choose two. This is a symbol you may find in your calculator in the math probability or math numbers menu. I forget exactly where it is in a graphing calculator. But basically what it is, we say it's n choose r. And the way you calculate it is n factorial over r factorial. And then to take account for the fact that order doesn't matter, we end up also doing the number that you didn't choose factorial in the bottom. So how you choose 2 from 4, n would be 4, and r would be 2. And it's a little confusing because all the numbers are the same. And you would you would get this. You would get 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Now, let me remind you what factorial means. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's just the number times decreasing integers until you get to 1. 2 factorial will be 2 times 1. The other 2 factorial will be 2 times 1. So I can cross off. I mean, the ones you didn't really even need to write. I can reduce this if I want. I get 12 over 2, and I get 6 possible combinations that, that would be two toppings. So instead of using the number 4 here for toppings, I'm going to use the number 6. And let's see how that works out when you write it out um, using a set that's more specific. Let's say your toppings were A, B, C, and D. How do you get pairs? Well, you have the pair AB, that's two. The pair AC, that's two. And the pair AD. Then I, so I've covered these. So then I start with the second one. Pair BC, pair BD. And you can kind of see where the factorial comes from a little bit. And then I start with the third one and I just have pair CD. Even though it didn't start with a four, you can, you can kind of get that idea. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six possible combinations of two taken from a set of four. Now, if the set was bigger, if the set was six toppings, you wanted two, you obviously this number would be bigger. The number for n would change. That would be a six. The number for r, you're still choosing two. That would be the same, but the number for n minus r would become a four because six minus two is four. So you, you would have more ways to choose two toppings from six, as you could see. Um, so this the way to choose two from four actually is three factorial, it turns out. Um, but that you don't need to know that. What, what's really important is that you know how to use this, that you write this formula down somewhere. Now, this is when order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I choose lettuce and tomato or tomato and lettuce. That's the same two toppings. We'll see about in another video about how what you do when order matters. So I'm going to end this here because this video is probably long enough by now. And this is going to be a video on basic combinations is what I'll label this one.